All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Karima Imorti, who is in the midst of a very big dream in which the process has been very humbling and inspiring for her. So, Karima, how you doing? I'm wonderful. Oh, thank you so much to have me today. I'm so excited about being on this podcast. I'm equally excited to, to ask you some questions, too, <laughs> about what became the how did this dream podcast become a reality, Timothy? Because that's amazing. Because as I was saying before the show that, you know, just thinking about that, some, we sometimes we're so busy chasing the dream that we forget about the process and how important it is to really even document that and talk about that because it can be really inspiring and helpful for other people. So this is an amazing podcast and very important for people that are, you know, moving towards their dreams or trying to see those dreams become a reality. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, awesome. We like to jump right in. And if you could start with just telling us a little bit about yourself and some of the things that you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Okay, well, uh, my name is Karima Morty, and as you know, and I'm married to an amazing husband, Anthony. Um, we have four sons, um, and um, he and I run several successful businesses together, and I, uh, the things that I like to do for fun, well, I'm always working, so that was an interesting question when people say, that. what do I do for fun? Sleep, because I don't get a lot of it. <laughs> love it. But, uh, all jokes aside, um, I love... Um, worship music i'm a worship minister at our church and so you know listening to worship music you know getting with some people and just kind of just singing and just you know coming up with all the songs you know of course i got my worship music but then you know i'm still human and i still love old r&b songs and i'll get the old songs my husband and i get over there and start listening to all the old songs and i'm just really having a good time vibing and, and you know and um having a good conversation with old friends and just you know, talking about life, you know, where, where the country is going and just kind of, you know, chilling with my grandkids. So it's a lot of wonderful things that I do. And it's generally evolved around interacting with people that I love and care about. And so those are the most fun things that I do. Now I have bucket list things that I want to do. Like I still, you know, want to go to Paris and, you know, there's a few things that I have, you know, countries that I want to visit, but I love spending time with people and just learning about their life, uh, sharing our dreams, sharing our goals. I mean, I'm a big, if you're not talking about goals or, you know, how to make money, I'm hoping I don't have a whole lot of conversation for you these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I feel that. Well, awesome. Tell us uh, about your successful businesses that you run. Okay, so uh, my husband and I, my husband's an architect, so we have, um, and I do interior design, so my husband, you know, has an architectural um, company, so we do those kind of projects. Um, development projects for architecture. I've been in training development. I ran a nonprofit for a number of years, and now I kind of do training development for corporations and big, you know, hotels and big organizations, training their leadership on leadership development. Um, and now my husband and I um, recently um, started a television network, um, a Christian television network called No Walls TV, taking God out of church buildings and bringing them into everyday lives. We educate, entertain, makes you laugh and inform. So that in itself is a huge and then of course we have a car business that we you know we have multiple cars on toro and so we just have all these you know strings of income because in these days you gotta make sure you're not having all your eggs in one basket for sure yeah yeah for sure tell us a little bit more about the toro thing and how you guys started that and started to scale it oh so that's interesting because we we hadn't any intention you know we have the toro and then we also my husband also buys and sells cars um, and he's an architect. So you can imagine that doesn't normally fit together, but we decide we want to find some ways to make passive income. Um, and, but, you know, we're finding out it's not as passive because you still got to go deliver the cars and pick them up and there's still some, but it's, we're wanting to find a way. And so we, we're talking to, you know, we go to a church that's very entrepreneurial minded. People are big on entrepreneurship because we recognize the kingdom of God needs what resources. Broke people can't help people. So you got to have um, money to, to, to help anybody and we want to help people. And so there are several people that we knew that had tried it and they were been doing really well. So we decided to, you know, some people had had cars on the different platforms like higher carbon, you know, older cars. And we were like, you know, people would tear their cars up and it'd be all kind of drama. <laughs> so we're like, we're going to go to Toro. We, we just bought, you know, several, you know, had multiple new cars, you know, at least 2018 or 19 are brand new. And we put them on those because it was people that were a little bit, you know, different type of people that kept the cars a little better. So we didn't want to deal with the, uh, <laughs> so 
some of the other challenges that come with some of the platforms that are less expensive. So we decided to do that and we keep scaling. We have four or five cars on there now that we bought and we're going to be scaling it up and continuing to bring more and more and more. Um, but we're just learning as we go. And of course we have, like I said, we, he also started to buy and sell cars and, and then we just, you know, he's actually in the midst of another um, architectural project. So we have so many projects going on. And then right now, you know, so doing in the car business is interesting because, you know, you buy these cars and you have to maintain them. And, not, and we're always we're good about taking care of our cars, but you'd be surprised how people, some people are really good about it. And you have people that bring the car back. You think, oh my God, what did you do inside of this car in two days? <laughs> I've been looking like this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about your motivation in life and what gets you up and keeps you going every day. Okay, so uh, my motivation is to see I'm a Christian. So my big faith, my faith is my motivation. That's my foundation. That what drives me. That what um, uh, my faith in Jesus, my faith in, you know, and then people. I love people. My heart is always, I've always been a very caring person. And to see people reach their dreams, reach their goals, to see people excelling, to see the kingdom of God advance. So that's my motivation. I get up every day. I mean, I run several small groups. I have, you know, a prayer group with over 2,500 women in it. We pray nightly. I mean, I make a lot of sacrifices to see people live their life to their fullest potential and to not see people walk in bondage. There's a lot of people, particularly during COVID, Timothy, so many people we're so isolated. They're so lonely. And a lot of people are still going through this. So when God gave me the idea to start this prayer group, we today will be 127 days. We've been praying every single night from 10 to 1030 all over the country. I mean, it's just even in other islands and around the world, I was like surprised at the women that have joined the prayer group. But it's because so many people are isolated. They needed a community. And so I'm motivated to touch the hearts of people, to see people not live in bondage, to be so many people were just in bondage and had kind of stopped living and hadn't even know, don't know how to restart. You know, and they're still trying to get back. They need a community of people that can stand with them and and um and to pray with them and to uplift them and encourage them. There's a lot of people, unfortunately, that don't have um great uh, networks of people to socialize or to have a community of people that can lift them up. And so I'm very big on people having a community of people that that the right type of mindset, not a community of people that go woe is me and pity parties, but a community of people that can stand with you, hear you, listen to you, but also encourage you to move from that space of, you know, maybe oppression or depression or anxiety, or just, you know, feelings of hopelessness, because, you know, during this COVID season, a lot of people became hopeless, and I just want them to know there's hope in Christ, there's hope, you don't have to remain hopeless, and I'm not, not denying what you're feeling is real, but I'm, I'm also telling you that you don't have to stay there, and you just need a community of people, you need some people that can stand with you, so I'm always motivated by people. I love that. Uh, awesome. Well, take take us into your dreams and goals and vision for all of your businesses ooh, and your ooh. life in general. There's so many. So one of my biggest dreams, I want to build um, um, hospitals, churches, and schools all around the world. That is a big, big dream um, to build hospitals, schools, and churches because you bring health care and education, people want to know about who you serve because they're going to try to figure out why. So I'm like, I don't believe in just preaching that people and can't offer them. And you, you don't want to hear about a God is going to be broken, struggling, uneducated. Oh, but come follow my God. I'm like, um, no, Jesus fed people first. You know, he was very clear on how to get people to um, to, to him. And so that's that's the ultimate dream is to build churches, schools and hospitals all over the, around the world. Um, but to do that, it takes resources. So um, and then also, you know, my, one of my, that's the biggest, like the high, and then one of the, the, right up under that, or maybe even parallel to that is to be, to, um, to own media, because I'm so aware of how media affects our world, um, and how that controls the narrative of what people believe and what they see, and it was very important, particularly in these days where people of faith have been, you know, in, in a lot of ways, are being, trying to be muzzled. Um, I think it's important that people are able to be there and have a platform for media that's not controlled by other people. Um, so that dream of starting the, the television network was part of that. It's like, look, well, I want to be able to tell the truth about Christians. We're not racist. We're not homophobes. We don't hate people. That's a narrative that's been displayed, but it's just not true. Um, and so if you don't have your own media platform, one that's outside of someone else's, 
you know, like a Facebook or YouTube, those are great platforms. However, if you don't have your own platform to articulate yourself, then you, you don't get to tell the truth about who you are. And so that's very important to tell the truth about Christ and um, believers. And so those two things, you know, with, with, and, and in undergirding all that is to bring as many people to Christ as I can. So, I mean, everything I do is, is, is part of the great commission. And these are just platforms that God has allowed me to have to, um, to do it. And then, you know, also to see people, you know, economically, you know, um, stable, um, educationally stable and whatever that looks like. I'm, I mean, I believe in being educated, but I don't necessarily, I mean, I'm educated. I've been to school, but I tell people you take the path that that's working for you because everybody's path is not the same. However, I think you should seek knowledge into the grave. You should never be uneducated. I read a lot of books. I mean, I mean, 52 is minimum a year. That's a one book a week because I'm like, I always tell people you're only as the wisdom, your knowledge you have is is, is based on the last book you read. If you're not reading and how are you educating, how are you learning? So I'm a big reader. Just, you know, um, so those are my dreams. And so I have different ways to get to them. So the, the businesses that we run are just channels to provide the resources to fulfill the dreams that I have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I think it's really important to know big picture where you're going and then also know the steps to get there. And you know that your businesses right now are a priority because they're taking you to this mission of building hospitals, schools, and churches all around the world, bringing as many people to Christ as you can, all of that very beautiful stuff. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and I'm big on action. You asked me about that too, Timothy. Action steps, people. Yeah, awesome. A lot of man. people... <laughs> A lot of people hear dreams and they stay in the dream mode, but, you know, and sometimes it's easier. Most of the time it's easier to stay in dream mode. Well, God told me this. And, and unfortunately, sometimes as Christians, well, God gave me this vision, but yeah, he gave it to you, but you're going to have to actually do it. He's not coming down from heaven to come and do the vision. He's going to give you the vision. He will support you. He will back up your works. However, you do have to take steps. So I'm big on corresponding action. Yes, God gives you a dream. He gives you a vision. And then you go do and then he gives you the next step. A lot of people are just stuck on waiting on God will do it. Well, absolutely not. He won't. He's already did everything. He said, I've already given you everything you need pertaining to life and godliness. So your job is to hear from God and then go do. Go back to God, get the next instruction, go do. But the go do part is very important and dream fulfillment. And some people stay in the dream stage and then they feel let down or, or um, they, they're angry at God because well, I don't know why it's not happening. Then you look at what they've done and they pretty much just have the dream not even too much is to write it down so one of the things i think is very important is you have to write your visions and goals down and if you see i have a one of my notes is my vision 2021 goals and i look at these every morning and every night because you have to keep your goals in front of you for them to come to, to pass you need to have you know you know what are your daily habits i believe the secret to your success is in your daily habits what you do daily not what you do when you get motivated some people say i can only um, I can only move by inspiration. Well, then you won't be very successful if you only do things when you're inspired because most days I don't wake up inspired. I just do what I got to do. You know what I'm saying, Timothy? I'm sure you can relate to that. It's not about just be. I, inspiration is wonderful, but it's, it's a short period of time, but it's your daily habit. What you do in and out, in and out every single day is what actually gets you to your dream fulfillment. Because there's a thing of just having a dream, then there's that place of dream fulfillment. And we want to fulfill our dreams, not just have them. Yeah, absolutely. No, I completely agree. 100% action is so important. And I love that scripture where it's like, faith without works is dead. Uh, completely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, if you really believe, it would like motivate you to get to you do. off your butt and go do, exactly. So I love that. Well, tell us about kind of what your impetus was. We talked about it a little bit before we started recording the show, but tell us about that first step. Um, first, I think, and I told you at the beginning, that is such a good question. You know, it's one of those, okay, I need to think about my life questions. Um, what, what prompted me? What was the impetus? I've, I've always been a go-getter. So that aspect of my life, you know, my character, my personality is a go-getter. But there, there's different things. I think the impetus was when I believe I've been given something that's big, I don't know how it's going to happen, but to not do anything just seems redundant. It doesn't seem, 
like it makes any sense to have a dream and then don't do anything to make it ha happen. Now, because of my personality, I have um, tried to do things out of season. Like you just try to force things to happen. But even in the trying to force it to happen, at least you're trying to do something. So I believe the impetus is just, I actually want to see my dreams become a reality. I don't want them just to be dreams. You know, I remember one time, because, um, okay, man, is this still, it doesn't bother me, but I remember I used to work in marketing when I first came out of school years ago, and I worked with someone, and it was when I first started doing films, because I made, you know, several films, and I've done a lot of different things over my career, um, but I remember her telling to me, oh, you're such a dreamer, and it was my boss, and she said it in a derogatory way, because I was talking about, you know, I was going to make these films, and and we live in this world that people are dream killers that they don't understand, you know, the how you can have a dream outside of where they see you at in that moment or where they believe that you can go. But the, the thing about all those people that I work with, and of course, I, you know, and this is not, and no dismissal or dismissing it, but I, I'm cheap. Not even, and not even, we're so far wide, the gulf between us is so wide, it's ridiculous because I had a dream. So for dreamers, Yes, it's great to um, actually fulfill them, but continue to dream. You, some people will try to make you feel like, oh, why are you even dreaming? That's just too much. But God told Abraham that as far as you go outside of your tent and look as far as your eyes can see. So first, you got to be able to see it. You got to believe you have to spend some time to imagine big. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to allow your mind to go. So I'm never, ever going to tell somebody their dream is impossible. The bigger it is, the better, because God said, without faith, it's well, he says, uh, with man, is impossible. With, with God, all things are possible. And if you can do it, then you don't really need God. So I don't want to have God's eyes dreams because I want God to help me get them done. So first of all, you just got to not allow other people to make it. So I remember feeling really bad, like, well, who am I? And then I just had to shake it off. You know what? I'm going to have my dreams. And this person, I don't know where they're at now, probably still working for somebody miserable, because you don't want to dream. You don't want to believe that you could have dreams. So, you know, all you people that are if you're listening to this podcast, you're somebody that has a dream and all those dream killers that are around you, cut them off. Like, like if they're like family, you know, you got to be gentle. Like, don't just start cutting people off. But you have to be very careful who you share your dreams with so you don't, you know, find dream killers. But you have the impetus is just to first you got to believe you got to have a dream. You got to allow yourself to dream. So many people Unlike us that are dreamers, Timothy, we think it's natural, but there's a lot of people are even afraid to think uh, big or to imagine their life outside of where they're at. But it's okay. It really, as a matter of fact, it's not only okay. That's how God, you have to see it before you see it. I believe, therefore it is. Not I see, therefore it is. I believe, the moment I believe it, then it is. That's how I function. I believe first and then I see it. Because if I had to see it first, then I couldn't achieve anything. So dreamers, believe it. Once you believe it, the moment you see the dream, it is established. Because God works from eternity, not time. Time was created for man. So as a believer, you have to believe it. And that's what God can work with. That is faith. He said, um, faith with, um, I walk by faith, not by sight. So when I see something in my head, I already know it's done. Now, the process to getting there is the action step. But dream, you have to get to the place when you allow yourself to dream. And I'm not talking about that dream that you can figure out how you could do it. I'm talking about that massive dream that you're almost afraid to see it. But the more you dream it, the more you think about it, the more you see it, the more you brood on it, the more you meditate on it, it starts to become clearer in your eyes. You start to see the legs and the feet. You start to see the color of the hair. You start to see the eyes. You start to see the contour. It's because becomes more real do you understand that you are creating and that thing is just an action step away from happening but first you got to allow yourself you got to spend intentional time every day focused on the dream allowing it to manifest in your eye so it becomes so real that you can like taste it and see it you can feel it and then the action step is just a matter of time absolutely i love that i love that and i think it's a really important thing you know it's always funny i'll be talking to my brother and we'll because you know we're young guys we're on our way and sometimes it's hard to see that next step and we'll be talking about it and we'll be like well why aren't we there i'm like well theo can you see yourself actually receiving that like can you see yourself living that life and he'll be like no but so often we think about ourselves in the life we already are and we continue to live in the life that we're already living in and i think that's so important to like really 
just see your future and like see it clearly and the more vividly and clearly that you can see it um i think the better that better off you're going to be so thank you for that i appreciate that oh you're so welcome <laughs> awesome well if there were one or two people or types of people that you could meet to really help you take the next step towards your dreams and goals who would they be and how would they do it now i want to ask is that are they living or dead <laughs> Um, if they're dead and they can help you, you just have to tell us how they can help you. <laughs> well, then I'm going to go to living with Jesus. I already talked to him all the time. So yeah. uh, I'm not worried about that. Okay. So living, I was thinking about that. So one of the people that I would like to meet and to have a really good sit down question, it would be Ted Turner, um, the owner of CNN, the one, because and people knew his life. I read his autobiography. He had a lot of mishaps. So people really thought he was a a nutcase, some of the things he did, they were so, what I've noticed, I love to read autobiographies of successful people. Why? Because when you do, and I, and I, and any dreamers on this, the listening is do that because what it does, it gives you the courage and the strength when you have those times that are going to come, which are, are heavy or losses. And um, because you recognize that people show you the prettiness, but they don't show you the process. And so I'm always wondering about the process. How did you get there? What are the steps? What happened? What are the ups and downs? Because when I meet them, then I'll know what to do, or at least won't, I'll be prepared and willing to fight it. So Ted Turner, because starting a multimedia empire that he has done and so many offshoots of it took a lot of courage and boldness, and it took a lot of vision, a lot of dreams. He had to dream big. He had to dream outside of what was his current circumstance to be able to see it. And then another person... Um, that I would, uh, that I would, um, and this is, um, this is a dream, but it's not even that far away. I'm sure it's not, it's going to happen. Um, I want to talk, uh, me and I'm sure he's on my list to meet, and I'm sure I will, um, is Joel Osteen. I mean, I'm, I'm not, that's a dream that I'm not. And the reason I am, because what is it like to take something that was already built by your father and then take it to a completely stratospheric level? Because he's and he went through a lot, you know, he was the multimedia person for the church. So no one was thinking of him as the next pastor to lead them into this great future that they have and still serving God. They have a great, you know, media ministry because that's his background. So, of course, it was going to come, you know, um, just different people that have walked their faith. And then, you know, as far in terms of women, um, I want to I would love to have a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. And, and, and I like, I'm like, I could always see her as my bud. Um, you know, like we could be real. I want to have, how did you fight the odds? How did you, as a woman, as an African-American woman um, in a, in a media uh, driven, when it's, when the way you look, you didn't look the part, you didn't have any of the accoutrements. You didn't look like the successful talks or you were African-American, you were overweight, you know, you weren't, you know, She's an attractive woman, but she wasn't what you consider the glamour girl. You know, this look that people give you that this is what makes it. And she fought all that and became who she is a titan. She is a powerhouse to the date. Um, and so just to have the conversation, you know, with her um, intimate conversation of some of the, the perils, because I'm always interested in the, in the defeats more than the successes, because people always want to hear about your success. No, I want to hear about your defeats and how do you rebound for them? Because I always, when people tell me, well, I haven't failed in much. I mean, I'm not, a, I, I, I win at everything, because this you means you haven't tried much, because if you've ever been successful, you've had a lot of failure, because that's the only way to get, you had to fail your way forward. So if you haven't failed much, you haven't done much. That's all it tells me. Keep coming. <laughs> My- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I completely agree. And love those three people. Um, and we'll definitely get you connected if there's somebody in the audience that knows them and can make that connection. What's the most yes. important? Yeah, absolutely. What's the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to help you get to your dreams and goals? To help me? To help you. Oh, wow. Watch the te- television network. <laughs> no loss, TV. TV share, talk to me. If you're a Christian content creator, we created No Walls TV, not, not to have sermons. It's going to have those on Sunday, but it's a platform for Christian content creators to articulate the fact that God is in our everyday lives. So I want, I was, I've been a content creator. There's no platforms that had Christian television shows, talk shows. We're hosting a new show. We're starting a new show, um, sitcoms, uh, uh, a cooking show, all those things with a faith-based background. So what you can do is, you know, submit your content. 
and watch the television show, um, watch the television network. What community do you live in so we can bring it to your market because we're looking for markets to bring the television network to. Um, so those are things that you can do right now. That is our big focus um, is getting that out there because we know it's going to be a huge platform and God has shown me the vision. And like I said, it could be very overwhelming. So what I do is I just keep plugging along daily, but I really want content creators who have these great ideas, these great stories, these great videos, these great, you know, concepts, but they take it to the mainstream media and they're like, oh, nobody wants to watch that. Nobody is going to, you need to put some sex in there. You need to have some people, you know, drinking and, you know, it's all the things that you don't want to be. That they put in and, and, and because there's no platforms, you feel like, well, I can either go on YouTube and get very few views or change what God has given me to fit a culture that doesn't fit my faith. And so that's what No Walls TV is for. So I'm looking for people, young people like you to have all these crazy ideas that are faith-based that, you know, they can't really do much with them on network television, but you're actually be on television. So that's what I want to provide. So that's a huge, 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 huge help for, for us at this time. And it's telling people about it. No walls, no walls. We don't have walls around us. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So if there are any Christian content creators out there, make sure to connect with Karima because we can get you on and it can be a mutually beneficial relationship. And awesome. We love mutually. We love reciprocity. Big reciprocity is big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And now we're going to jump into our thriving three. So th these are just questions that I ask you about yourself to figure out how you thrive in life. And so my first question for you is, what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. My favorite book is The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. Um, and that book was the one that helped me convert. I was born and raised as a Muslim. And um, 10 years ago, uh, God did a miracle in my life. And I converted. And um, I went to Muslim school, spoke Arabic, all that. He never thought I would become Christian. Matter of fact, I wasn't even looking for Jesus at all. Um, but he found me. But that book was one of the impetus um, that got me to convert. Literally, after I read in that book, I called my father. I was like, Father, I'm like, Daddy, I think I'm going to have to try this Christian thing out. <laughs> and uh, so that's my favorite. I should get, even get stock in that company. I've sold so many by telling people about that book, um, Timothy, that I should literally be giving stock in the company for that book. But The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. I love your podcast. So I just have to throw that in there. The Dream <laughs> Podcast. I love the concept, the idea. I think it's going to go so much better, so much bigger. Um, you just keep allowing God to spend time thinking about it, dreaming about it. You have your dream guest on here before long. And so I'm excited about that as well. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. And what's one way you like to take care of yourself? One way I like to take care of myself is to spend time in meditation, I spend time in God's presence. Because I'm telling you, people, most people don't spend any time thinking, really meditating, allowing their mind to expand. And that is a very important aspect. All successful people, if you look at their, you know, wherever faith base they come from, they all spend time in meditation. They all spend time, you know, and some people call it oneness or whatever, but I spend time in God's presence. That is, man, if, if he is my CEO. He is the source. You know, I'm the channel. Um, but he's the source. It's like if you have a cell phone, you can buy a $2,000 cell phone, but if you don't plug it up into the electricity, it can be a doorstop and not functioning. So if you're not plugged into the source, which is Christ, God, then you are not functioning, whether you recognize it or not. You're just basically a doorstop, you know, um, uh, that looks like a, a, a $2,000 cell phone. You know, so I always tell people, if your cell phone is not plugged, we plug up our phone, we keep charges with us all over the place and make sure we don't lose our charge, yet we don't spend time in God's presence. And that's where you get charged. That's where you find out the next step. That's how you're able to grow something from an idea to a manifestation. Absolutely. I love it. And what's one action step you can take right now or continue to take if you're already taking it to keep making your dreams come into fruition? Write your dream visits down and review them every morning and every night. It's, it's, God says, as you behold, as you behold the vision, it becomes clear. If you if you don't have a goal, most people write the goals at the beginning of the year and can't, if they ask them now, they don't even know where their goals and dreams at. This is not a condemnation. This is something for you to say, well, you know what? Where are my goals and dreams? I, I, if you don't have a target, how do you hit it? You got to have something. So an action step, write your visions and draw those dreams down the top, you know, and actually review them every day in the morning and at night. Keep them before you because the more you keep them before you, the more they become real. The more they become real, the more you start to make the action steps and the more action you do, the closer you get to them. Awesome. Love it. 
And is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? I just wanted to ask you a question. What made you decide to start this podcast? Absolutely. So, you know, I've been on this success, like kind of grind since I was 14. Like I've been (laughs) thinking about it and like wanting to really be financially free to help my family out and to have time freedom for myself. And when I was 18, got into real estate and still a big real estate guy, but I do a bunch of real estate stuff. Not really passionate about it. Great wealth vehicle, but wasn't really passionate about it. And I listened to this energy audit about um, the CEO from carrot.com talks about energy audit. He talks about what gives you energy and what drains energy. Mm. And so I wrote down all the things that gave me energy, energy, wrote down all the things that drained energy. And then he tries to focus over the next quarter on the things that give him energy. So eventually he'll be living a life where maybe 80 to 90% of his activities are giving him energy. And he's kind of, he's created systems and outsourced all the things that aren't giving him energy. And I wrote down that talking to people about their dreams and goals and then making them happen gives me energy. So then I was like, well, how can I do this every day? And I already had this podcast concept, but it was to kind of supplement my real estate business. And it wasn't a thing in and of its own, when really the podcast concept was my dream and my goal and what I was passionate about. And when you're passionate about something, it's where you can serve best, where you can help people best, because it's like the thing I'm here to do, you know, and so once I figured that out, I was like, well, I need to figure out a way to talk to people daily about their dreams and goals and then create a community where I'm helping inspire them and hold them accountable to action and progress. Hence the podcast and the discord community that we've created. And really it was just the doing because I was like, how do I do a daily podcast? How do I do this? It's, the sound quality is going to suck. I don't know how to edit podcasts. And I was like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to record the podcast and then I'm going to post the podcast. And since I don't want to, yeah, like that's it. As so now I record these podcasts, I post the podcast. And when it comes time to like, maybe I'm 200 episodes in and it's creating a cup of some revenue, then I will, um, I'll outsource the editing and we'll have better sound quality. But it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to be the editor, but I'm going to be the person who's posting the podcast. And so it was really just taking that action and not like hesitating over, you know, small things such as editing, because most of the podcast is smooth anyway. So it doesn't need to be edited um, as much. And so, yeah, it was really just finding what I'm passionate about and figuring out a way to do it every day. Well, you just inspired me to do something. This is so amazing. I love young people. You guys are right. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, because it is It's like, and I, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Dan Sullivan. Um, he's uh, the book, or he does, um, uh, what is the book? Uh, oh, how could I, I've told somebody, I, I got a million books on my, my. Um, I need you to connect with this book because I know you will. And Dan Sullivan is the writer. I have like eight or nine of his books, um, but the one, uh, Who Not How, read that book. I love that concept. I haven't read the book yet, but that concept is literally why I asked the question. If there was one or two type of people that could help you. It's that concept. I heard somebody successful talking about who, not how, who, not how, and how important it is. Read that book. I'm telling, no, don't just, you need to read that book. It's on my, I've read it multiple times now because it's, um, it's important. Um, and so I need to create that because it's, and he has several books. So that's, um, that one. And then he, what is the, I got said, because, you know, I'm an audio, I'm an audible person. I read a lot of books that way. Uh, who, who do you, uh, what was, uh, always be the buyer it's another one of his books just start reading his books i'm telling he is like the ceo he's like the mentor to all the biggest some biggest names you know he's you don't know him but the people of the wealthy do (laughs) and they become the wealthy then you know who they want to know who they listen to who they who they submit themselves to and dan sullivan is him he's an amazing he's a man of faith but he's a big on who not how how do you create these and so that concept that you did but it's just that a whole about energy where you spend your time and energy and that's what who now how is all about. And I'm, and I, and I have, I haven't read it in about a month or two. So I need to reread it and get back into that because you start spending all your time doing, 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 and I need to be in my zone of zone of genius. And when you spend too much time outside your zone of genius, it's very, very draining. And so that just saying that just 
I love talking about dreams to go with other things that I love. I love talking about the power of prayer. And so those things, like I started this prayer group, but I know that I need to move some of the things I'm doing inside of it that is draining to someone else because then I can do the peace that is most, which is praying and teaching you how to pray, how to use the word of God to pray because it's real and it does work. And so, but yeah, read the book. I'm telling you, when you read that book, you're going to be like, what the, what the have I been doing with my whole life? And you're so young, so you don't have to wait as long as I did. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's a really good book. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for asking that question. I always love to get to talk about why I do what I do. <laughs> awesome. I always want to know because it's important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Was well, there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? Uh, no, just watch No Walls TV. You guys send some prayers up for me. I love prayers. Please pray um, because it's going to take prayer and action and, um, you know, and, and send people who, who have Christian content, all your friends that have been, you know, got their YouTube videos and their things that they've been doing and it is one away. I just want to see myself on TV. Well, you got opportunity now. There we go. Well, awesome. If you got, if you guys are listening to this podcast and you liked what Karima had to say and you know some Christian content creators or you just want to be plugged into No Walls TV, make sure to connect with her and also watch No Walls TV. Finally, we ask you to send this podcast to somebody you know needs the message, who you think it might impact their life. Go ahead and leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Thank you guys for watching. Karima, thank you for coming on the show. And we're out.